you know, one of the things that um, I, when, in the beginning I talked about how crazy people are to come up here and do this sort of stuff. You have to figure out what slides can you pick that will fit with your story. How can you time it so that it be perfect so that when you advance, you're not talking about something that's way off in the weeds like I am right now. These are not easy things to do. But there's only one person that's crazier than the people that came up here and talked already. And that's the organizer of this event. I mean, she truly is nuts. Uh, she's a graphic designer and um, an art director, and her company, Synergy, sponsors this event. Her name, of course, is, we all know her, Sin McGregor, and her title is Reinventing Sin. Now, I don't know about you, I didn't think we had problems in that area, but here it is. Sin is going to tell us how we can all reinvent sin. Well, I don't, want, I don't really want, you know, to reinvent you. This is really just a bit of a personal story, and uh, I've been, it's been my, in my head for a while, and I've been doing a lot of other things lately, so I've got notes, sorry. So this is my kitchen, and I was sitting, uh, actually I was cleaning, scrubbing, and a young woman asked me um, for some advice, and I was rather surprised that she asked me. Um, but I was prepared for the answer. Um, she was planning to move to a new town and not know a soul. Right? So um, I had some experience in that. But what she told me was that she had a three-year plan. She, um, she, she was confused. There was a man involved. That's always confusing, you know. And I didn't have to ponder very long to, to give her an answer. I was actually a woman with vast, vast, vast reinvention uh, experience. And I had a lot of knowledge about it. She was a young woman with many miles to travel. So I'll circle back to that story in a minute though, about reinvention, which is what this is about. What it means to me is more like embracing unexpected opportunities, right? That's really what it is. And I was conscious about my first reinvention when I was taking advantage of a transfer from Atlanta, uh, from Boston to Atlanta, right? After 10 grueling snowstorms that year, I was so thrilled to be able to see two months of like green and flowering things, right? Um, I was in, I was there for sure. Um, but I was also having a relationship issue and there was a breakup forthcoming in this scenario. I shouldn't have to move 1,901 miles to get away from the problem, but at the time, it really seemed like a good idea. So I reinvented myself from Northern Yankee to a Southern something raw, complete with hats, because I like hats. I knew it was successful when I went back the next winter and I was wearing a sporty purple hat instead of the woolen cap that is usually seen in the north and made me look somewhat like this gnome here, right? Um, and people looked at me and was like, she's wearing a purple hat. They don't do that in Boston. What the heck are you talking about? So I knew it was successful. I was happy to be in Atlanta, but I was um, not a friend at all um, because uh, I grew up in a small town. They couldn't even spell my name correctly. Um, but what the small town had in common with all other small towns was that girl who had a bad reputation. You see, in this town, I wasn't the girl, by the way. She, she, she wasn't a bad girl, but she, but she just had the same name as I did, right? Or the pet name that my mom had given me. So um, I, when I moved to Atlanta, I reinvented myself from that name, and everyone pre-1990 knows me as, I can't tell you what that was, and everyone after 1990 knows me as actually Cynthia. So I was on a, a reinvention role, and I went back to college, and I studied some, and I was liking interior design, but I found that the classes were a little, um, I was more drawn to the painting and the drawing, right? So when a friend asked me, why don't you just embrace the artist in you, the not good enough sprite came. And I was also in a family where my dad, hey dad, and my sister, hey sis, were the uh, artists in the family, right? They, um, th and I had memories of sharing my prize painting with my dad, and he said to me, don't leave your day job, me girl. And I was 10, and my creative stopped. 
A few, la few years later, I found photography. This is my grandpa, Charlie. I didn't have to draw. I could just shoot and compose, and it was great. My dad bought me a dark room and everything. It was perfect. I received a diploma in photography. This was one of my first collages, though. So back to not good enough, right? Was I an artist? Could I, could I be if I couldn't draw realistically? What would people think? Well, it'll, let me just tell you, I got over it. Um, wherever that sprite pops up, I just take aim at her, and I say, that was so, that reinvention was so 1990, girl, right? I am an artist in my core. I always have been. I always will be. When we moved to Raleigh from Atlanta, I reinvented myself again to Miss Cynthia, and these are my students. I had no formal training. I just had a garage turned studio, some time and creativity and drive to make it happen. So I'm going to circle back now to the young lady in the kitchen. So I know about reinvention, right, you guys? I felt confident I could help her find the answer. And in fact, in this part of my life, after 30 years of marriage, I was starting a new reinvention of my own, this time to single lady. The woman asking about whether she should leave and move away with the man was my soon-to-be ex-husband's girlfriend. Yes. We discussed moving to new places, not knowing anyone, leaving past mistakes behind, definitely not going because a man asks you, but rather having personal goals. Advice I would give to any 20-something young lady. After listening to a version of the story that you're hearing tonight, she challenged me saying, my way was wishy-washy, unplanned, unfocused, unprofessional, unfamily, and unusual. I stood there speechless, a little in shock, partly because uh, it was awkward, <laughs> and partly because I couldn't have agreed with her more. My unway of doing things was messy, but Ralph said it best, all life is an experiment, and the more experiments, the better and my ability to be flexible and change has served me well. You wonder, did she take my advice? She did. On the same day, my paintings, entitled Change is Certainty, opened first Friday in October 2011. I was at the courthouse with my very unremarkable divorce being final. And if you had been at the gallery that night, you would have seen my next reinvention. Next to each of the paintings, was my name yet again, except this time it just read Sin. And now when I meet new people, I introduce myself as Sin. Just Sin. Thank you, you guys. You've been great.